Thank you. Okay, I can hear my mic it should work. So welcome everyone. Um, welcome to our Thanos introduction slash some trends some slash, slash some updates and live demo presentation. We are super excited to be here and, and really yeah, meet all the people, like sometimes in person, like I, I, I met <laughs> Ben in person for the first time as well, even though we were working for like two years almost in the community. So it's amazing to be, to be in person here, so welcome. Um, so I have Ben with, with me today. Um, so thank you, Bartek. So this is Ben Ye, and uh, I'm a software development engineer at AWS, and I'm one of the maintainer of the Thanos project. And I'm also contributors to some CNCF projects like Cortex, Prometheus, Argo CD, etc. And I have a puppy called Gui. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Bartholomew Potka. You can call me Bartek. I am principal software engineer at Red Hat. I'm maintainer of various projects, including main, uh, Prometheus and Thanos, lots of Golang projects as well. And uh, I'm active in the CNCF. I also recently have my puppy, is Purple Heron, because I wrote a book, uh, it's finished, it's being published in November, so pretty soon you can pre-order it now, it's efficient Go, uh, about you know how to write efficient Golang, but really it's also language agnostic, how to have a good observability-driven practices over towards better efficiency of your solutions. Um, but yeah, let's really start with just introducing Thanos. Um, maybe you know what Thanos is, maybe not. Um, maybe, yeah, let's ask, like, how, please raise a hand if you know what, what Thanos project is. Well, actually amazing, yeah. So maybe it will be just um, reiteration or maybe you will uh, learn something new. So I will let Ben to, to introduce Thanos right now. Thanks, Bartek. So to introduce Thanos, uh, let's start with the story of uh, Prometheus first. Prometheus is a monitoring system that is mainly inspired by Google Borgmon. So with Prometheus, we are providing a highly reliable, easy to operate monitoring solution. And it's just a single binary, but it provides very, uh, many powerful features like data scraping, querying using very f flexible prompt QL and alerting. And, uh, but Prometheus comes with its own problem because uh, it somewhat lacks scalability and high availability. And here, this brings us to Thanos, which is a distributed Prometheus. And Thanos is more high scalable and horizontally um, Prometheus. It provides a global view for querying multiple Prometheus at the same time. Instead of using a local disk as Prometheus, it uses object storage like S3 to store long-term data. And it also offers some other features like downsampling and multi-tenancy. Then let's speak about uh, the Thanos community. And Thanos now is a CNCF uh, incubating project. It was open sourced by Improbable since um, 2017. And Thanos has a vibrant community. And now we have over um, 490 contributors and over um, 3,700 users on our Slack channel. And we also have over uh, 11K GitHub stars. And we have also many adopters, and a lot of users are quite happy about Thanos project. So if your company is also using Thanos right now and not in our adopters list, feel free to open a PR upstream, and we are really happy to have you. So after talking about the Thanos community, let's do some deep dive on some uh, Thanos internals. So let's get back to Prometheus first. As I just mentioned, Prometheus is just a single binary, but it has multiple components providing some essential functionalities, right? For example, we have query engine, script engine, and an engine for rule and alert evaluation, and uh, some TSDB component like compactor. So um, to in, on Thanos, we want to scale more on the query path first, so we extract the query engine to a separate component called Thanos Querier so that we can make it horizontally scalable. And next, for the script engine, we keep using uh, the original Prometheus one, but in this case, we deploy a Thanos sidecar component closely to the Prometheus so that we can get a globally query view. And uh, in order to scale more on the rule and alert engine, 
we have Thanos rulers uh, with us. So uh, as you can see, with these components I just mentioned, we got the uh, simplest uh, Thanos deployment model, which is called uh, sidecar deployment. So with this model, we can have um, a highly available premises and also a global view for querying and alerting. And actually, we can extend more uh, on this model. Um, like one issue with Prometheus is that Prometheus uses local disk to store time series data. Although um, local disk works for most uh, user cases, it um, has some issue when we want to store data in a very long retention uh, time period. And um, in this case, object storage is usually a better solution because it's uh, easily scalable, so we can uh, control the size, and also it's, it's much, much cheaper. So we have the Thanos Tidecar component with us, and it can upload the TSDB blocks to the object storage every two hours. And uh, in order to query the data from the object storage, we have a new component called Store Gateway. And uh, uh, in order to make our long-term query more efficient, we have a component called Thanos Compactor, which um, improves the query performance by merging blocks together. So we have another mode, which is uh, sidecarless, or we usually call it receiver mode. So in this mode, you can have your metrics collector to push metrics to Thanos receivers using remote write protocol. So this could be useful if your network topology has some limitations to the poor model, or if you just want to have a central place to store or query your metrics. So that's the introduction about Thanos. And next, I will hand it over to Bartek to talk about the recent trend of running observability as a service. Thank you, Ben. Um, yeah, so, you know, with those components you've seen where what, what Ben explained, we have like very flexible model in Thanos of how you can kind of use it for what use cases you have. It kind of, you know, kind of fits your needs. Um, however, with all the users using it in different scenarios, we saw a certain pattern which, which kind of like maybe, you know, um, motivated us to prioritize a certain feature. And I would like to uh, talk about that and really what, what it can be called is observability as a service. So what I mean is that, you know, in the past when maybe there was no Thanos, you used to solve your monitoring needs with just Prometheus and it was probably, you know, solving majority of your cases and you generally put Prometheus next to your processes and next to your workloads and you have like built-in alerting and, and querying and dashboarding, dash, dashboarding and like um, this rich record system, um, you know, can, can, can solve uh, many, many of your monitoring needs. However, with cloud native community and bringing more communities you know, have an easier way to install and distribute those Kubernetes clusters, we kind of tend to um, really uh, use Kubernetes or clusters as a cattle, not as a pet, so we have more of them. So in this case, you might want to scale this solution into something that supports you know, multiple clusters. In this case, you know, Thanos was created to allow you, you know, perform queries distributed you know, against distributed kind of storage. Um, so for example, you could keep your data in Prometheus and still use Thanos query in maybe remote location to have something we call global view. So essentially, you, you are able to aggregate data uh, with multiple sources, from multiple sources. Um, however, you know, if you are maybe power user, if you have a certain use cases, you might want to opt in into something called like receiver mode, where we are kind of trying to offload as much of data from uh, Prometheus and as soon as possible as Prometheus scrapes them, try to send them to remote location so the, the, the kind of like client side, like cluster side is yeah, kind of cheap and like as, as you know, as, as simple as possible and, and you kind of, we have like standards and protocols to, to, do, the, to do so and then you kind of have a bit more complex um, kind of architecture on the cluster side, but it's kind of like only one cluster that has this complexity and you could put all the data there and, and, and do your alerting and monitoring from, from this place. And this is where, you know, Thanos allows that as well, if you want. And with this approach, we saw that it kind of got popular in a sense that many users switch or like run hybrid solutions that have both, you know, um, this pool model with sidecar as well as receiver model However, we, we've seen kind of like some pattern where 
you know, companies and large corporations tries to compose this kind of cluster side observability into like abstraction, into some cloud, right? Um, cloud that, you know, as from user perspective, they only, you know, the, the, your teams that maybe developers or SREs who are managing your applications, they don't need to know exactly if you are using Thanos or Cortex or some vendor, you can kind of like easily switch as well. As long as you use maybe Prometheus or OpenTelemetry or some kind of standard, you know, you can uh, totally, you know, switch and kind of like stream the data into some cloud and just, you know, you expect this to have alerting and you, you expect this to have some PromQL queries and your, com you know, your, your company is much then easier or your organization might, might be kind of like much more um, convenient to, you know, run the applications because those, those teams doesn't have to understand, you know, necessarily how observability has to work. So this is kind of very popular nowadays and we kind of acknowledge that as a Thanos uh, team and we want to prioritize certain aspects of the system that makes it easier. And we kind of can uh, categorize three things. Multi-tenancy uh, with isolation and quality of service because at the end you want to, you know, kind of have maybe dedicated observab obser uh, <laughs> observability team that is focused just on maintaining, operating the system. And then um, that means you probably have different users from different teams that doesn't necessarily need to see each other metric. Or perhaps maybe you have a secret team that doesn't, that, sh that kind of have metrics that are somehow collocated to the user, so you don't want to kind of, you know, leak those and, uh, and, and let other maybe not admin users to see that data. So multi-tenancy is a very strong, uh, important reason why we kind of, yeah, um, I mean, important, important characteristic of such system. Reliability is another part. Like if you want to have a dedicated service, usually in organization, we end up building a lot of services that depend on this observability. So if you want to alert from that place, it has to have an, a lot of nines in your SLO. So it means it has to be reliable. So that's kind of another part where we are trying to prioritize uh, as, a, as a team, as a community. Finally, scalability and efficiency, right? Like, of course, <laughs> I, we, can, we can, you know, told you from our practice, from, from our experience, once you start this idea, hey, you have this service and you can just use it, add a tenant and just send out some metrics and then query them, like there are so many internal teams that starts to want to use it, right? And we have that in Red Hat as well. And it's like immediately they would like to push to you like billions of series because it's internal, so they cannot pay for that because kind of the same company. And so you end up having like very, very high scale very quickly. So we want to make sure this solution is, 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 is kind of efficient and cheap to use, right? Uh, and we want to make sure Thanos is, um, yeah, is, is kind of like fulfilling those, those use cases. So let's spend a little bit time on, on going through various latest kind of improvements in this area. Um, so I will let Ben to mention some of those. Yeah, thanks, Bartek. So let me give uh, some updates about the recent uh, improvement we made for Thanos. So the first thing uh, I want to talk about is uh, called bucket prefix. So this is one of the oldest feature requests in the Thanos community since, I think, 2018. Yeah, and um, so with custom uh, bucket prefix, we can have a uh, bucket level multi-tenancy by default, and each tenant can have their uh, own data under its bucket prefix. So we only need uh, one bucket to hold all the data. And uh, yeah, thanks for the uh, awesome Thanos community's contribution. We finally have this feature landed in the uh, v0.2018.0 release. So to enable it, it's very simple. We just need to add one more line uh, to the object storage configuration file uh, as it shows in, in this picture. So yeah, it's just one line of configuration. And uh, yeah, next feature uh, I want to talk about is about uh, real limiting. So uh, as Batek just mentioned, we are uh, running uh, like tunnels in observability as a service mode. So yeah, usually it comes with multi-tenancy, right? And uh, if we are talking about multi-tenancy, we usually mean uh, soft tenancy because we want to uh, reduce costs, we want to save money, so we use mo soft tenancy. But this also means it, uh, our, all our tenants, they are going to share the same uh, physical clusters together, right? So if we have some uh, over overlay abused uh, tenants or they are sending uh, a huge amount of traffic, to protect our service and to protect our other tenants. Uh, we want to maintain our quality of service, so real limiting is really, really important. And again, it's 
not just a real limiting, so actually it applies to all limits, all general limits. So for the um, limits improvement we added to tunnels, so, um, we have recently added those features here. And the first one I want to mention is about remote write limits. So we added four limits here. Um, one is the request size and also uh, the number of uh, series and samples per remote write request and also the maximum number of uh, concurrent requests here. And uh, another interesting limit I want to talk about is uh, about the active series limit. So why active series is an important limit? So in Prometheus TSDB, active series means the number of uh, series in the TSDB's uh, head block, and they are all in memory. So the more active, active series we have, the more memory we are going to use. So we want to um, avoid, or we want to limit this metric to avoid high cardinality and to avoid our service being OM killed. But anyway, we can like scale up more, like to, uh, to a better machine, right, to use more memory, but it's not uh, cost efficient, right? So we, this kind of uh, limit is super important for us. And uh, to get the number of series uh, usage per tenant, it's not that easy because uh, we cannot either get it locally for each tunnel's receiver because each tenant's data are spread across um, the whole receiver clusters. And also we have a uh, data replication feature enabled. So usually we write uh, three, three X more um, series. So it's not easy to do the calculation from the, a single receiver. But to solve this, we simply, uh, we have a, a solution which simply asks a, a meta monitoring solution. For example, the Prometheus running in the same clusters that monitors your tunnels. By querying that Prometheus, we can get um, the current tenant series usage by some metrics. So yeah, that's how we solve it. And uh, yeah, next, uh, let's talk about one scalability improvement we made for hashing. So um, like the Thanos receiver component, it uses hashing, but previously the Thanos receiver was simply using hash mode to distribute series. For example, uh, let's say we have this example series here and we have uh, three receiver replicas and based on the hash mode calculations, the destination would be a receiver two. But if we scale out more, we increase one more receiver. In this case, the hash mode value, it would become zero. And uh, this is super bad because with this naive hash mode, hash mode calculation, each time when we change the number of servers, almost every series will be mapped to different instances. So this is, yeah, to me, it's totally wrong. And it will keep some issue like high cardinality as well because we will have more series, more active series in the head block. So to solve this, what we really need is consistent hashing. So thanks for the awesome blog post written by Daniel Grinsky. So we implement the Katama hashing here uh, in the yeah, recent tunnels release. So if you are interested in the details, please do check out this uh, blog post. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much about the improvement I want to introduce. But next, I will hand it over to Bartek to talk about the really exciting query efficiency improvement. Thanks a lot. I hope it's exciting, yeah. So, I mean, Ben already mentioned, you know, reliability improvements and multi-tenancy improvements. So last thing that we should improve is, of course, scalability and efficiency. And there's always something to improve. There's always a better way to, to, to do things and, and have it cheaper. So let's dive into what we are kind of enabling here. Um, so, you know, generally we have from the past like very simplistic solution for querying. You, we discuss like different kind of uh, storages, uh, which we kind of hide behind the gRPC API. We call it Story API. So those Story API leaves uh, could be your Prometheus and Sidecar, could be your Store Gateway, could be your receiver, could be your ruler. And all of them allows us to fetch some data from multiple 
um, places, like different storages and so on. So what we want to do in terms to achieve this global query is to put the PromQL engine, so the actual the key part that computes and, and gets the storage data and puts that into your uh, PromQL result, is, uh, is, is, the, is the PromQL that we actually, PromQL engine that we put into query or microservice. And we literally import Prometheus code, right? So, so it's one-to-one -one the same. And it kind of works. You put, for example, I have an example query here. It's just a count aggregation of, uh, count aggregation of some metric for two days. And you can see it simply takes all the data from the storage it needs, two days for this metric, right? So what's the problem of this is that this is a single point of failure and that to, to answer any question, any arbitrary PromQL, we have to pull all of this data into memory. And um, it's just not very cost effective and of course it's hard to scale. So in order to scale it, we had to kind of do some improvements. So first of all, comes from the community and thanks to the Cortex, and Cortex kind of team and project, we kind of borrowed their, their idea of this query front-end microservice, another microservice that sits on top and talk to the queriers. And essentially it has lots of different transformations of the PromQL that you pass, that one of them is, is to kind of split split by day or split by any time. So which means that, for example, our query for two days could be split into two queries for one day and we can distribute that into one querier and just run with multiple cores uh, or distribute into, uh, into like totally different machines. So we achieve some kind of horizontal scalability with this. And then, you know, storage calls are also distributed because we, we ask more and smaller, que smaller queries. Um, the problem with this approach is still um, we can get, uh, you know, kind of slow and expensive, uh, you know, boxes of the querier because imagine if this metric, even for one day, gives me like one million results, one million time series. So I have to pull into memory one million time series for this one day and, and, and still have to do it. And still I cannot really scale that. So for, for those reasons, we started a lot of initiatives and um, you know, we had a talk earlier this year in Valencia from uh, Moad and Philip um, how to distribute those queries even more efficiently. So the two solutions we added uh, for portion of the queries is first is pushdown. So what pushdown is doing is essentially trying to, um, you know, for certain queries, be able to not um, really fetch all the series from storage, but really calculate certain aggregation, which, which is possible for some aggregations, calculate the results directly near the storage. For example, a store gateway could be, you know, when you count, when you, when you ask for count for a certain metric, the, the storage itself, store gateway can calculate me the count. So instead of giving me 1 million series, it gives me one series, right? So, so it's much more cheaper on the network side. Um, and, and it can, what additional part is that we can kind of shard this work easier and, and make it more concurrent, right? Um, so, so this is what, what, what Pushdown is doing and it's enabled for some, uh, for some uh, computations, especially against Prometheus sidecar. Uh, and by the way, because Prometheus has a PromQL engine, so we can kind of uh, offload that execution there. Now, another point that actually solves this kind of uh, sharding or only horizontal sharding. Uh, horizontal sharding means by time, we had that, but we wanted to introduce something better on the vertical side. So maybe we should split a querying, a computation into multiple pieces within one day, for example. And this is what query sharding is doing. It's already enabled um, maybe by, by flag or, or, but like, yeah, it's kind of like um, also, it's not possible every query, so we have to be careful here. Uh, but generally, if you enable it, you can have you know, we essentially split, for example, one query into four queries because it splits by day into two, and then those one day queries can be split, for example, by two, by simply kind of a certain hash mode on, on a series and how we aggregate them uh, together. This is not very easy if you do average, for example, because you cannot, average of averages is not the same as, uh, and average of that is not the same as average of this, all, the, all, the sources, so all the sources. So we have to be very careful, but there are some optimizations you can make with that. And that already improves the scalability of the storage queries as well, because there are more of them and just smaller. However, hopefully you see certain patterns. So we have some magic, some push down on the stores, uh, store APIs, and you know, there's some magic there, some complexity we add. Then there is a big magic on query front end. We have some complexity to shard, to, to transform queries. I don't know if you see the pattern, but there is a pattern. Why we are not improving the PromQL engine itself? 
And uh, we, the two faces, we were a little bit scared of it, right? It was a kind of like, um, you know, multiple years, um, a, I mean, old code and, 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 and kind of like very intrigued, very optimized for uh, Prometheus use. It was designed to run only on one CPU core maximum, so it was not concurrent. Um, I mean, at, at least not, not the way we, we would want it. So it was, it was simple, it was amazing, uh, but perhaps there's a way to attack this and, and open, open this Pandora box. So this is what we'll be talking in two weeks in prom, on PromCon in Munich. So if you want to, I think there should be still tickets for that. So join us there, we'll be talking about that with Philip. Uh, but I shortly would like to show you and, and get you excited about this stuff because I am. So first of all, like we have, this is like a drop in replacement from PromQL engine. So you can totally use it in Thanos even. It's in the Thanos community organization, uh, PromQL engine uh, project. It's, you know, open source contributions are welcome. We already have a bunch of projects, not only Thanos contributing to that. Um, why it's amazing? So first of all, it is based on Volcano design, which is behind, you know, multiple proper mature SQL engines. And uh, it allows essentially nice framework of operators for, for different execution uh, parts. Uh, for, for, for example, for aggregation, we have another operator and for storage selection, we have for scan of storage, we have another operator. And then it allows us to move those par parts uh, uh, around for optimizations or really understanding what's happening inside. It also allows for nice concurrency. So, you know, if you can see that existing SQL engine is very popular to have those query planners and optimization, op optimizers. So usually you, you parse your query, for example, PromQL query uh, into logical plan, you optimize that, and then you, 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 you prepare physical plan and optimize that, and only then you execute the query. We never had this before, right? And, and this is a good opportunity to add those things where we can do informed optimizations. So this is like production, production, well, this is a PromQL engine code. We literally already did that. We create a logical plan. We optimize logical plan. We then add physical plan and, and optimize that as well. And then actually, we've, it's not everything implemented. We just started this project months ago. So, um, so we fall back to old engine. Uh, if there is anything we don't support. So you could run this on production and we run this in production in Red Hat in, and Shopify um, a lot. So, so, so I recommend you to try it out. Another cool stuff is that, you know, there are cool explain views in, you know, SQL language. And I was missing that in, in, uh, in PromQL, especially when we introduced those, you know, uh, operators. So we, uh, we wanted to add that. So let's me, let me now start some, uh, demo. So I have something to show you, and let's see if that will work. So first, I will have to mirror my screen. Yeah, I want that. And it's kind of super big, but so what I will do, I will start our setup. The setup is very simple. It has two store gateways and Thanos Querier and kind of two replicas of that. So, so we have one replica which is both PromQL enabled, new PromQL enabled, and one replica which is not enabled. And uh, we use, as you can see, um, whoop. things are popping up, that's good. How do I make it big or smaller actually? So now you can see I'm, I'm using essentially some Golang end-to-end -end, uh, framework we have that you can kind of like orchestrate containers in a, in a like unit test in Golang fashion. And since we run it, um, you can see that a couple of things opened. We run essentially multiple containers. We have Prometheus just to monitor this setup. And let me try to kind of make it smaller. Uh, we have, you know, we have Parka because we want to, we are actually working on optimizations, right? So we have to have profiling and uh, we have uh, tr tracing. And finally, we have two Thanos, well, Prometheus, uh, well, Thanos UIs, which are really similar to Prometheus that are two, uh, essentially we're calling queries to, to give us this UI and perform certain queries. There are errors, but they're on purpose uh, because I don't want to kind of execute the query yet. So let's, we have a new PromQL here, uh, or like set up with new PromQL and old, old one. So let's kind of query old one. So what I'm querying, I have like two week huge block of data with 10 million series. So it's, it's and I only query one day and it's scarily fast, honestly. <laughs> let's see, let's see the, uh, the new, new one. 
So, um, so essentially, I'm doing like simple aggregation. I don't know what's going on with this room. Maybe it's a screen sharing, but it's so fast. Anyway, uh, it <laughs> used to be like 10 seconds on my test runs. I think we should just bump it up. Yeah, let's, let's do bigger one, two days. But essentially, you already see that six seconds was on old query, and then a new query was already twice faster. Uh, oh, no, we could, no, 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 no. I want two days, two days. Let's see if that will work. Uh, and also, I'm doing really a lot of mistakes because I'm trying to run this at the same time. So, you know, not good optimization, like benchmark practices. However, we already see uh, some improvements, like 11 seconds for old one, a new one um, for uh, eight seconds. So, so why, why is that faster, right? Like it's just a new PromQL engine implementation. So the reason why it's fast, um, and, and kind of to explain this, uh, we added this explain mode. So to PromQL, I just uh, have explain uh, comment, and it kind of like prints me, you know, we are working on user experience. I just added this like yesterday. <laughs> but, but this view is, is what we will try to maintain and add um, just to show you, you know, what's, what's the execution plan uh, will be. So you can already see that we have a certain parallelism and concurrency within the, 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 the PromQL engine. So it noticed that I have 12 CPUs, so it kind of like sharded into six. And it already, it doesn't shard the storage yet. We'll do that uh, later on in later versions. But right now, already sharding within the, the PromQL engine, like just on my um, one machine, is, is already improving the situation because we are essentially counting those series, um, like, uh, you know, six, uh, six times in the parallel. Um, okay, but that's, that's boring, right? Let's, let's go and have like one more, uh, more entry qu um, query. So this is a typical query we do in PromQL. So for example, you can see I have some cluster version and I want to kind of have a percentage of this cluster version without certain version, for example, right? And um, this can be expensive because like the, the, the naive PromQL implement or like the old PromQL implementation were um, essentially scanning the storage twice, right? Just first to have this cluster version and just to have this, you know, actually I'm pulling right now like 200,000 series. Um, so, so kind of a lot. And then I do another scan of storage. And the reason why it was implemented like that, it was implemented for Prometheus, where you have in memory all of this data. Versus here in Thanos, we have, unfortunately, some kind of network lookup and even object storage lookup. So it can be a little bit slow. We can see 11 seconds. It's actually not so bad. It's actually pretty fast uh, with so much data. So let's see how our new query will perform here. So what's amazing is that this logical plan and physical plan separation, it allows us to optimize and really uh, open space for other people to contribute uh, you know, more optimizations. So we can see it's super, it's like three seconds versus 11 seconds. It's, I'm impressed even. And um, what's amazing is that let's see what's, what's going on. So if I explain this, it's kind of like more complex query, as you can see, because it just has more more things, and generally it, it, it has a two separate kind of parts that only divides after all, and you can see all of them fetch some series, and this is before optimization. So you can see in my logical exp in the explanation is that there was some optimization for some sorting of matchers because it's just whatever, it's just faster, and then you have merge search selects optimizer. So this is the key thing I want to show you. So what is happening is that this is after optimizations. You can see that new thing was injected. It's called filtered selector. But the really uh, what's happening here is, is, is on um, those series selectors. So series selectors essentially fetches the data. And we can see their memory address of this actual series selector in memory. Uh, in, in, my, in my query. So you can see the address is exactly the same for all shards, but also exactly the same across different parts of the query versus before it was a different memory address, um, you know, uh, for first part and second part. This indicates that the same data is used, so we cache the same series, and we literally make a query only once to get the cluster versions, and then virtually filter for a second part and reuse the same memory. So that's a huge optimization, and you can see everything in our tracing solution. So let's go to Jaeger, grab the query range, and oh, let's find them. So one was three seconds, and the second was 11. So let's go to the old, the, the, the old, old PromQL. Many things happen, but what's really I want you to focus on is the uh, query selects. So you can see that selection of this data, there were two of those, and it took some time. It was parallel, but it still overloaded my machine in some way, and there was some congestion, so at the end it was slower. Plus, we have to kind of like proxy all of it. So at the end, um, you know, we made the two calls, 
and um, one for you know this filtered data, and second it without the, without the filter. And what's 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 cool with this simple optimization, which is kind of like maybe five lines of code, uh, we already can achieve something like that, where we have only uh, one selection. And again, this is my local networks; it's ultra fast. But if you go and fetch series from Prometheus Sidecar, this really matters, right? So um, it's already faster a lot. So so this is what I wanted to show today, and um, hopefully this excites you. It excites me definitely. Uh, and if you want to learn more and really like try to maybe write those optimizations, uh, I would like to invite you to do so. And the last before thing before, before we finish, uh, I would like to mention that we are doing mentoring. mentoring. Uh, so if you, if you know any students, but actually we also mentor not students, like full-time employees, if they want to join you know, open source space and really start contributing, check the websites, uh, website and uh, sign up for the program and we'll try, I mean, we mentor a lot as a community. So, so you're welcome to, to join us here. And uh, that's it all, that's it for, for us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.